Hi, everyone. Welcome back to another episode of Ask Dr. Nick. My name is Dr. Nick Schmielkoffer, and I work for the Neurologic Wellness Institute here in downtown Chicago. And today's question is, how can posture tell me something about the brain? How does posture reflect brain activity, um, said in another way? And this is a really important question as well, because um, there are two major, major things that we look at when it comes to brain activity um, statically, and that is how are the eyes and how, are, how is posture. And so posture can be just the, the simple broad terms that we normally think about it in as you know, slouching down or sitting up straight or um, always kind of looking down and hunched shoulders all these things, right? But there is more to posture than just that. Um, there can be changes in spinal mechanics that cause different dips and turns. There can be different head tilts or head turns either direction or even keeping your head upright versus down, okay? And this all tells us something different about how the brain perceives the world. And so, for instance, if someone comes in to see me and I see somebody looking down at, uh, and just constantly looking down and maybe trying to look up at me like this and they're kind of hunched over, um, they are perceiving their world more as in this downward, downward state. And is it just that it's a, it's a kid that's constantly you know, on his phone and texting or playing video games? Or is it somebody who, who works all the time and is constantly on their computer and looking down at their computer rather than being more upright? It can be a lot of different things. And we, our posture is a lot based on, besides mood and other things, a lot based on our context and how we are perceiving the world. So there are a lot of things that go into posture and postural control. So first we'll start with just um, this one paper, just because I like the graphic of it. And so this paper is from 2015, and it is a critical review on normal postural control. It is from the Journal of Physical Therapy and Occupational Therapy. And right in the way in the abstract, they talk about how postural control evolves from interaction of the individual, the person, with the environment and the task that is at hand. So if the task is at hand is texting, then that's how posture is going to be. The task at hand is writing an email on your computer, that's the posture that's going to happen. If the task is walking while you know kind of looking straight ahead, then that is the posture. Um, it emerges from a complex interaction of neuro and musculoskeletal system. And so what I want to look at here is how this complex interaction comes together to give us posture. So if we go down to the figure here, so we have this, we have the central nervous system or the brain, which is going to coordinate and integrate many different sensory systems in our body, which is then going to give us postural control by our muscles, control by our eye movements, and then together balance or balance of posture so that we feel that we are upright and we are in a good state. If, for instance, uh, let's go back to each one of these. So the vestibular system comes from mainly our inner ear. And so this inner ear is going to tell us basically, are we sitting upright? Are we lying down like we're going to bed? Are we upside down like we're you know flipping or um, we're doing a handstand? And this vestibular system is super important because it is our most basic sense. Uh, jellyfish had it about six million years ago in order for them to know if they were swimming upright or if they were swimming on their side uh, and bouncing around. And so this vestibular system kind of gives us that basis of this is where we are compared to the rest of the earth and earth's gravity pulling down on us. Then we have the, our visual system, which we really use a lot. We rely as humans on our visual system. And that is where we take in 
the different areas around us to tell us, well, that wall is straight and I am straight, so therefore I should be perfectly straight up. Um, versus if I'm laying down, oh, that wall is turned on its side, so, but I don't feel straight up, so therefore I'm not straight up. That makes sense. Um, and then our proprioceptive system is the sensation that we get from our muscles, um, our joints. Our joints are very highly integrated with receptors to give us a feeling of activation, and then our skin. And so this proprioceptive system is not only in the neck, in the shoulders, arms, in our legs, but also in our feet. And so again, they give us a sense of, am I you know, sitting upright? Am I tilting my head? Am I laying down? And so all three of these, all three of them need to come together and merge in the central nervous system, in the brain, to tell us where we are in space. And they need to all match in the brain. If they don't match, for instance, if the muscles and the vestibular system are saying, oh, hey, I am sitting upright and I'm not moving, but all of a sudden eyes don't portray that. The eyes are maybe moving side to side or they're drifting to one side. That's telling the brain that something else is going on. There's this sensory mismatch. The sensory mismatch causes there to be um, changes in the brain to try to make those problems match up. And so if everything looks good, but the eyes are moving, drifting to one side, what's going to happen is the brain's going to say, oh, I'm moving, but I don't think I'm moving. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to squeeze my uh, muscles in the back of my neck to kind of stabilize my head to make sure that I don't move. And that, that connection, that tone is what can cause neck pain after concussions, after head injuries, um, or maybe just it in, during development. And so with all of these, we can kind of see where is this posture or how is this posture related to the integration in the central nervous system? And then to look deeper at the vestibular system, visual system, proprioceptive system, what is truly going on in the brain? What, where is the main issue? And so, keeping that in mind, let's go back here and let's think about a, an example. So, if somebody has their head leaning over like this to one side, let's say the right side, this could be that they are more comfortable. They feel that this is their straight head. This is their normal. It is keeping their head off to one side. And when somebody comes in like that to me, that's telling me that, man, if they feel better over here, that means they are activating different parts of their neck, their proprioceptive system here on the right side. They're maybe activating a little bit more of their vestibular system on the right, um, all to go into the brain to integrate with that visual system and say, oh, hey, I feel better over here. This is this is where I can function at my best. But if they have to make this compensation of head movement to function at their best, then their brain is not truly integrating what should be normal, which is straight up. And now this may be something that's completely unconscious. Most people don't realize they have a slight head tilt or they're always leaning forward or um, their posture is just not, not necessarily ideal. And not to, not to say that we should necessarily be body shaming and saying that, you know, everybody that has a head tilt here has something wrong with them or um, everyone that's leaning forward has something wrong with them. But it is all a representation of how the brain is perceiving that environment and how the brain is integrating these signals in order to give us a proper sense of where we are in space. And so this is really important for for me as a clinician and for other people to recognize and to see like, how is, how is the brain integrating these functions? So um, that is all for today. That is how posture can really help us give us a window into uh, the brain's function. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. 
If you have any suggestions for future topics, I would love to hear them. Um, and I would love to answer your questions. So uh, thank you and stay healthy.